hi everyone welcome back today we are talking about flows and in this video in particular we're talking about debugging flows now we want to debug flows so that we can check basically if they work or don't work before we publish them and make them active <laughs> quite important um, and there's a bunch of different things that you know we need to know about how debugging works for flows so if a flow encounters an error all right, then it's going to send an email to the admin with a link to actually open Flow Builder and then see the failed flows interview path on the actual canvas that you build it on. So the canvas is just that flow screen. Um, and remember, a flow interview is just a current running flow. All right, so when we're talking about debugging flows as well, um, it's not just about flows that we are debugging before we activate them, but also if something goes wrong in a flow that's already active, then what can we expect as admins and what should we do? So if the flow does encounter an error when it's active, then admins fortunately do get that email with that link to exactly where it failed on the flow. Um, however, there are some exceptions to that, some cases where you won't get a link in that email to the flow. So there's going to be no link in the email if the flow is installed as part of a managed package, so it's not a template at all. If the failure occurs after the flow interview is paused and then it's resumed again. If the error is handled because the element that encounters the error is connected to a fault connector, then you're not going to get a link in your email about that. Um, if the failure occurs during an Apex test method, then you may get an email, but there will be no link to the flow itself where an error occurred. Um, if the flow is a standard flow, right, there's going to be no link in that email. And if the value of the flow's metadata status is draft or invalid draft, no link in the email. When we are debugging a flow, so we're running it in debug mode, the admin can decide to skip the starting condition requirements, to run the flow as another user with their own permissions, um, or to run the flow as if a record is, dot, 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 <laughs> uh, which means that we can run the flow as if a record has been created or updated in a certain way. Now rollback mode is enabled by default, but for debugging auto-launched flows, you need to remember to click that enable rollback mode button. Otherwise all the testing that you do might actually end up <laughs> making some real changes which you don't want to happen. Now fault connectors in flow are ways that we can kind of determine the normal path of a flow execution and then we can run a fault connector um, which will be executed at runtime only if the source element results in an error. So it's kind of like an emergency path. If things go wrong in that source element, then we have this fault connector here, which is where we want the flow to go if an error occurs. So that's a bit about debugging and flow. Um, not only how do we debug once a flow is live, what can we expect to happen if there's an error, but also what are some of the things to consider if we're debugging a flow before a flow is active, if we're actually using that debug mode in the flow console itself. I hope that this video was useful for you, that you understood a bit more about debugging flows, and I'll see you back here for our next Salesforce video.